and welcome to The Bottom Line, where we dig into the details of some of the main economic and business stories of the day. Statistics Poland released Poland's initial third quarter GDP results on Wednesday, and the overall consensus of 2.7% is considered disappointing. In recent months, there's been a downward trend for Poland's economic growth, with inflation on the rise, with consumer spending on the low. The European Commission, on the other hand, seems to be more positive about what's coming for Poland. We'll unpack the results with Piotr Bielski, Director of Economic Analysis from Santander Bank Polska. Hello and thank you very much for joining us in the studio today. Good evening, uh, thank you for having me. So we have disappointing and concerning readings for the third quarter at 2.7%. At the beginning of the third quarter, analysts were anticipating 3.3% and that's a pretty significant spread. What happened or perhaps what didn't happen? Well, first of all, uh, I think we may be uh, experiencing more and more the, the kind of collateral damage or the, the spreading negative impact of economic slowdown in Western Europe, especially Germany, because all, as all we know, the you know Polish Polish manufacturing sector is very well connected with Western <coughs> uh, Western uh, uh, value-added chains. Uh, Polish producers are are uh, preparing some parts components for Western producers and if there is a prolonging stagnation uh, taking place in Germany sooner or later uh, you should have uh, you, you should expect that it will come the effects will come to Poland and probably some effects are already showing but this is not all because on top of disappointing industrial results we also had pretty disappointing numbers on retail sales. And I think this part is what we still don't fully understand because on one hand, one can easily, like one can seek easy explanations. We had flood in Poland, for example, in September, but I think this is too simple to explain the, what happened with retail sales because the, there was such a massive and sudden drop in retail sales that is really impossible to explain it with the flood especially the flood that covered a relatively small part of the country. And also impossible to explain in any rational way, in my opinion, because it was such rapid, such big, that it was actually comparable to what happened in second wave of COVID in 2021. And I think in September 2024, nothing comparable really happened. So the pro I think what I think is that there was apparently some disruption in the data. We don't still don't fully understand it, but in my opinion, in my interpretation, uh, it could have been a kind of one of disruption. And I still believe that next months and next quarters should see kind of a return to a trend which will better than actually what happened in the third quarter. So we're yet to see more detailed results later uh, in the month. But nonetheless, uh, you mentioned all these areas, uh, the decreasing retail sales, industrial production that is lagging, but also a slump in construction here in Poland. Obviously, this is impacted by what is happening in Europe, which is in a difficult economic uh, situation. Um, what is the outlook, though, for Poland when it comes to these three areas, retail sales, industrial production and construction? Uh, do you think that there may be hope for improvement? Yes, I think so. Uh, first, maybe starting from the last area, construction. I think in construction, there will be an, a quite, it, it's quite obvious to me that there will be a significant improvement in the next two or three years. Why? Because the next or two, three years will be a period of a um, big jump in investment in Poland. All different kinds of investments, transport infrastructure, infrastructure related to energy, home improvements. Why? Because we will have, like, Poland has unlocked the big package of EU money that started coming recently, and it will have to be spent, big part of this money will have to be used and spent, employed in the economy until late 2026, which means that there is very little time 
to employ lots of money in the economy, and most of it will be channeled through investments. So that's why I think next two years will be years of investment boom, and that will help construction sector a lot. In terms of manufacturing, in terms of industrial sector, I hope for some improvement, because I still keep my fingers crossed that Germany and Western Europe in general will sooner or later will start recovering from the recent weakness. However, this improvement, I think, will not be significant or, or very, very big. So I'm hoping for small improvement, but not, not nothing really impressive. While in terms of consumption, I think there will be growth, but the growth will rather slow than accelerate because households' income will generally decelerate next year. We, this year is the year of record high increase in wages, in public, in, in uh, uh, transfers to, to some extent, being the co-product of the election cycle that we have just passed. And next year's, uh, the, this flow on, of income to households will be getting a bit smaller. And that's why I think consumption will grow, but rather slower, at slower pace than accelerating pace. But nonetheless, a, a lot of these uh, quarter results uh, have been uh, ascribed to poor consumer spending. Uh, I've read a few analyses and uh, a lot of poor consumer spending has been ascribed to this uh, because polls are allegedly intent on building up savings. I wonder what your uh, thoughts are on that. And there also are some comments on the fact that the, the population is aging uh, and also the population is actually shrinking and therefore it won't actually help in terms of building up uh, consumer spending. What are your thoughts on that? Well, look, definitely this year is a year of higher saving rate. But the, my point is that the revenue growth, the income growth of households this year is strong enough to allow for both bigger saving rate and also higher consumption growth at the same time. At the same time, this is actually what happened in the first half of the year. Consumption accelerated, but at the same time, saving rate was also higher. We still do not have the full data for third quarter, and honestly, I would not be surprised that there was that, that we will see some slowdown of consumption. But I would not expect it to be persistent. I would expect consumption to regain strength again in the final quarter of this year, because in general, still, the second half of this year is still the, the period of very, very rapid increase in, in households' income. And that's why I, I think expecting above 4% uh, consumption growth in, uh, on average this year is nothing really ambitious. It, it should happen. And it, it, this will be the factor uh, protecting economy from more significant slowdown. That's why we were betting for a long time that this year will be, it, it will be the consumption, private consumption that will shield economy from a, from a negative impact of, of German recession. Okay, um, and now the European Commission uh, economic forecast. They definitely seem a lot more positive. There's quite a bit of discrepancy in terms of what they say and what Polish economists are saying in terms of growth. Uh, 3% for 2024, 36 for 2025. What are your thoughts on what they say and what Polish economists are saying? Actually, uh, those forecasts are more, almost exactly the same uh, that our forecasts were a moment ago, uh, in our re report in September, we had almost the same numbers because that was 3.0 GDP growth for 2024 and 3.5 for 2025. Uh, so more or less similar. The point is that the problem is that after the, the yesterday's GDP numbers, I would be rather thinking about lowering slightly GDP uh, outlook for, or forecast for 2024 because 24 because apparently with uh, after what we already know uh, about three quarters 3.0 in the entire year would be probably difficult to achieve maybe 2.9 2.8 will be more realistic but I still I'm still not losing faith in 2025 as I said there will be huge impulse from investment. Uh, area because of this EU money that's coming. 
And again, we still don't know what happens with German economy, how soon and how strong it will revive. But I still hope that there will be at least some recovery. Of course, it's not a given. It's not a deal done. We know that there is a, a change of power in the US economy. There may be new tariffs coming to Europe, which will probably not help. So there is some uncertainty, some degree of uncertainty. But I'm still, I think, 3.5 GDP growth next year is pretty much achievable. And that's also at this, at this stage our baseline scenario. Okay, and just in one sentence as we wrap up, uh, your opinions for the Polish economy in terms of uh, Donald Trump returning to the White House, very briefly. <laughs> it's very briefly, it's, it, it's, the, the simplest story is it's difficult to say before we see actual decisions because the main... Well, your gut feeling, your gut feeling. ...president-elect is unpredictability. So, and he, because he's transactional, actually, it may be not so bad for Poland and for Europe in general, because if we offer him a good contract, a good deal, he may resign from some of his earlier promises that were looking bad for Europe. Okay. So we'll see. We have okay. to see. Thanks so much. Piotr Bielski from Santander Bank Polska, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. And that was Piotr Bielski from Santander Bank Polska, Polska joining us today on The Bottom Line. I was your host, Marie Kato. Make sure you join us every weekday on Business Arena at 5 p.m. CET. For the latest in regional business, make sure you follow us on X and on tvpworld.com. Coming up next, World Talks. Goodbye.